all right welcome guys we're back to another video so this time we're going to be talking about spray equipment okay so typically in the painting industry there's three types of, of spray machines you could call it a rig or sprayer whatever you want to call it right so you got the airless spray machine you got the conventional which would be uh, a spray gun typically found with uh, sold separately and then you have a compressor with an air hose uh, sometimes they have gravity uh, gravity fed tanks which means the the tank would be on top of the spray gun or you just would have those pressure pots so it really doesn't matter how you spray the pressure pot would hold the pressure and it would go through the, the, spray, the spray gun then you would have an HVL, uh, HVLP uh, paint sprayer uh, typically Graco and Titan sell these um, these are more of a fine finish they're, they're slower but they, they spray more evenly than an airless so pretty much a spray paint uh, spray painting is, is a painting technique in which a device sprays a coating so it could be again a paint ink a varnish stain pretty much anything right through the air or through the it sprays it through the hose it goes it goes onto the air and to the surface the most common type employs compressed gas uh, usually air to atomize and direct uh, the paint the paint particles this would be an, an airless sprayer um, again a conventional spray uh, spray machine which would be an uh, a spray gun with the compressor all that is doing is pushing an air through the through the gun and once it reaches the tip uh, paint is, is uh, sprayed to the tip to the tip and the spray actually throws it out there it's not the, it's not the paint itself so this is what your typical uh, airless, airless paint sprayer looks like um, I'm pretty sure anybody that's painted before knows what what these are so, you know, they might tell you on the test uh, for production what type of spray machine is is better, right? You know, obviously you're going to want airless. You're, you don't want a compressor and you don't want HVLP. You want something that can throw a lot of paint. So pretty much um, um, an airless paint sprayer consists of a high pressure pump that pushes paint through the liquid hose, which then atomizes through the paint gun and tip. Uh, the type of machine does not need compressed air to spray uh, obviously there's no compressor attached to this so it, it doesn't need it um, typically the ratio to uh, ratio to deliver paint is uh, 30 psi per pump uh, per 1 psi of pressure air by pressure so it'd be a 31 uh, fluid fluid hoses can hold up to 5000 psi but typically psi PSI will range between um, 1800 to 3500 PSI and that doesn't mean that's air that's just pressure in the in the hose okay so again this type of hose does not hold air it holds just pure paint hose sizes can come in uh, one, one, um, one eighth to one half depending on the fluid used obviously there's some fluids that are thicker some are more uh, watered down you could say uh, what and there's also some for um, you know and, and I'll go ahead and list it right here so one eighth to one fourth would be for medium viscosity fluids um, three eighths to half would be for heavier viscosity fluids um, spray guns have a fluid uh, nozzle and, va and valve the, the gun has a filter inside it's handled to screen through dust and contaminants before running through the tip. Extensions help reach hard to reach areas. Um, pros of using an airless, again, reduce the overspray. Uh, labor saving, which means it produces more of a, I mean, honestly, it's like, again, this is, this type of, this type of gun is used for fine finishes. So don't get me wrong, but because it has a wide variety of tips and sizes, this could be from something small to a, a single door to a complete warehouse, depending on the machine. But this is the type of machine that pretty much uh, saves you in labor. Okay, uh, it has better coverage, obviously. You throw on more paint and more evenly as well. Improved productivity. 
and saves material. Okay, common issues. The obviously common issue would be uh, tails and hourglass shapes happening when there is not enough fluid material or bad atomization. This is through the tip when the tips are messed up. This is typically what happens. Tails and hourglass, so the spray pattern is not even. You can fix this by increasing the pressure within the material or get a larger tip size, clean the gun, filter, or tip. Um, another common issue would be heavy distorted patterns. It means the tip is clogged. Clean the tip or get a new one. A lot of times when you use a... Uh, well, because the tip size is a very thin it's it's when they make these tips they do it at an angle so eventually they're gonna they're gonna wear out so there's certain times when you where you're able to clean it and give it an extra you know a couple more uh, days of spraying but it'll eventually need to be replaced um, fluid spitting means there's air entering the system or the gun is dirty Ch check for hose leaks or clean the gun if not if not replace either one um, sometimes you think you wash your machine, but again, your 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 spray gun, the actual gun, is dirty, or there's uh, air entering pretty much the the pump. So you have to know how to uh, how to get rid of all these issues for your for you to make a a quality uh, a quality run at your job. You know you don't want to stop midway. Rippling or uneven pattern means the fluid is not being delivered correctly. Um, either by pressure dropping or a leak to correct this increase the air supply or rate raise the air supply or raise uh, the air pressure look for leak change uh, tip size clean the tip or gun and filter round patterns are caused by worn uh, nozzle tips the fluid is way too heavy for the tips opening the way to fix this issue is by changing tips thinning the material or increasing air pressure Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about cleaning the machine. Um, typically, honestly, should be done right after the first, uh, your, your everyday use. So if you use it today, it should be clean today to avoid, uh, you, you know, you want your, you want your gun to, to last, honestly. It's a lot, it's a cost a lot to invest in one. You don't want to just be lazy and just let it go down the drain. All right, remove pressure by turning it off and priming the side nozzle. This this pretty much takes away the uh, the pump from working and all it does is makes it pass through so that it starts cleaning itself uh, remove the tip and filter from the gun then clean those while it's still running through the water the, the machine itself flush the material with water or solvent depending on the material so if it's a water-based uh, paint you go ahead and use water if it is a lacquer or maybe an oil finish you're either going to get a paint thinner or a lacquer or an acetone, something that can clean that that machine. And you never want to go ahead and use a water a water based machine with a with an oil or lacquer spray uh, based machine. Now that doesn't mean that machine can't spray any of them. It just means that once you use it with one, you need to start you need to stop using it with another one because what will happen is you're going to get water buildup inside the machine. And once you add oil into it, you're going to start having issues and vice versa. So if you use a machine for water, keep it with water. Use a machine with oil or lacquer, keep it with oil or lacquer. So you might need two, you might need two machines, honestly. Okay. Um, clean up the pump. Uh, every, every spray gun or spray rig, besides the spray gun itself, has, an, uh, has a pump filter. You always want to clean that as well. Um, once it's all once it's all um, cleaned up, your your spray gun, your pump, uh, any tip, every little thing that you can clean that comes off. Once it's done, you go ahead and assemble it, and you give it another flush just to verify there's water and it's clean. And um, again, if you're using some solvent or oil base, then you would use that. Uh, this would be your conventional spray gun slash machine. Um, this is typically used in auto, in auto, uh, in auto spraying. Um, it's used in paint and in, in, um, house painting as well. It's just not as common for production because, again, this is. I mean, you could just look at this right here. 
you're not going to paint a whole house with this, right? So it's this is main, mainly for like a small door. Uh, maybe you have some sort of furniture that you want to done, and you do, you know you don't want to make a big mess by bringing in your airless. This is the type of thing you use this for, small things. So pretty much this consists of an air compressor connected to a paint uh, paint tank or cup or spray gun uh, with con uh, pretty much with the connected hoses to the air compressor and um, if it's connected to a paint tank then that would finally pretty much it's a it's a compressor pot it's so the compressor would go to that to the paint tank and then you would have another hose leading to your actual gun Okay, and, and this is gravity fed, by the way, right here. If you look at this image for gravity fed, which means gravity plays a role in how it goes. And this is, this is more of a pressure pot. Now, there's pressure pots connected to the gun itself, and then there's one that has a hose right here, like this one, that would be connected to this. So you can maneuver this better than that. And that would actually be connected to the compressor itself. Uh, so pretty much the compressor provides the air and forces paint through the gun. And again, if you you've pretty much seen one, if you're a painter, you've seen one at least once. Okay. With an air with a conventional spray gun, paint is mixed at the cop at the cap. So again, it's actually um, it's it air flows through the machine through the gun paint hits the sides of it and then the air will push it out and that's how this works so this is why I'd say it's paint uh, to mix up the cap suction fe uh, feed guns use a vacuum by using compressed air to the paint through okay pressure fed guns do not produce a vacuum and air pushes uh, fluid by compressing air in the tank bleeder type guns have air running through it at all times non bleeder type guns have a shut off to control when uh, when to push air and fluid out the trigger the trigger pretty much the trigger controls it okay so this right here I wouldn't say it's important because um, you're not gonna get tested on this but it is good to know um, they're not again they're not gonna test you on this one but if you're a painter you should know well, you, should, you should give a you should get a good idea of what this type of uh, spray feed gun is and this would be your HVLP uh, spray machine this is more of a fine finish and I mean extremely fine finish uh, again this is not really made for big uh, for a big production job but this can do a couple doors so it's not that bad and and the cleanup is easier because the only thing you're cleaning would be the cup right here and the gun itself and that's pretty much about it. I mean, it, it's a it's a very simple way to clean that machine. So, pretty much, this consists of a turbine or compressor connected to a hose, then to a spray gun. Um, some have a remote cup or a pressure feed tank. This would be a pressure feed tank right here. All this is it just makes it easier for you to maneuver the gun, this gun. So it comes by itself. So that way, you don't have to have this tank right here connected to the gun, making you uncomfortable when you spray. Um, and when they say tur turbine or compressor, they mean this. They don't actually mean a compressor. Uh, this is more. This is a turbine. Uh, this is better than a compressor because this is specifically made um, to to have a constant supply of air running through it. So, or should I say, pressure? Um, an air compressor, obviously, it'll start to eventually run out of uh, pressure, which means your spray pattern won't be good and you also start running out of paint well air itself which means again you won't be able to spray this right here makes it so that you have a constant supply of paint running through and it won't stop and it won't have any issues either so this is a if you if you I would prefer this over a compressor but you know these are the main types so uh, sp spray gun techniques the recommend the recommended length to spray the area of a surface and and by the way that um, when I say we're talking about spray gun techniques we're not talking about an HVLP we're talking about all of them right here uh, the reason I didn't add too much into this HVLP 
uh, it's because it's a, it has the same information as the previous two spray guns. There really is no difference other than what they actually are. So whenever you're going to spray an area, you always want to have a 6 to 10 inch um, uh, spray length depending depending on the material. For example, um, um, you want to have, for, so from the surface to your, to your actual opening of your gun, that's how, that's how big you should have that distance, 6 inch to 10 inches. Uh, just makes it so that you don't get that many sags. Uh, but the most common one would be 8 inches from the surface. So you want to have, you want to hold the gun to the surface you're being sprayed at a 90 degree angle, which means directly in front of you, spring. You want to have it as even as possible, and you don't want to you don't want to cut it to the to a 45 degree or a 35, making making you do sideways strokes. You always want to have it straight to your straight to your eyes, basically even even. So when I, and uh, whenever you're spraying, you always want to have a 50 percent overlap, so that you prevent streaks um, and you get an even coverage. Always have the gun even to the surface. Excuse me. As having it arched can ca can cause 65% of material to be lost. Uh, again, this is this is because the spray pattern goes to the side, so which means you get a you get a bunch of overspray, never hitting the actual surface you want painted. Always test an area before spraying. If the gun has a uh, a setting for air or fluid, adjust that. If not, check the pump. If it's airless. Um, Again, if it's a compressor or it, or if it's an HVLP, the settings are very um, adjustable. So you want to make sure you want the, the best pattern and the, and the best air pressure that you want for your finish. Um, if you have an um, airless, it, and if you actually go to the pump in the machine, they'll have a PSI range where you can change it to whatever PSI, which is pressure, whatever pressure you want to give you a, either a bigger stroke of paint so more air hits it or maybe less air so you get more of a paint that, that's uh, that's less forceful and it'll be maybe thicker so you you can always maneuver this and you always want to test it test an area before actually hitting the um, the surface you want painted because once you hit that surface I mean you either gonna have to clean it up or wait for it to dry so you don't want to you don't want to lose you know, four hours, six hours of work on that. Always clean the material with uh, what it's being used. Again, water or oil or solvent or any other thing that you're using, you always want to have that same thing as a cleanup. That, that's meant for it. That's meant for it to clean that up exactly. Um, never mix materials that are not incompatible. Obviously, again, you don't want to cause your machine to go broke in you know in one week. Okay, tips and sizes. Every surface has a preferred tip. A small area requires a small tip, and a large area requires a large tip, especially with a large width. Uh, small fan widths work better for small areas as it, as it produces um, over, um, over, overspray. A large fan width works better for large areas as it will cover larger areas faster. Okay, a small orifice size like uh, and this is the tip reading. I'll, I'll go ahead and leave a, a picture for you guys to see all the different tip sizes. So a tip size of uh, 0.009 to 0.013 work for light coatings like stains, lacquers, and varnishes. Um, large orifice sizes like 0.015 to 0 .019. 0 0.019 work for heavier coatings like latex and um, oil-based enamels. Um, this is what's recommended by the state. Again, if you have a better idea, obviously you've been in the trade, then you know how to work with different size orifice. Uh, this is just what the state recommends. So pretty much how to read a tip. It's um, a tip with a number of uh, four, and this is by an example, by the way, uh, 421-310. I'm gonna give you this as an example, okay? So uh, 420, 420, 421 represents the manufacturer's number. Typically the first three numbers, so this would be the manufacturer's number. Okay, the last three digit numbers would be 310. 
So that represents the width and spray pattern. So when the tip is 12 inches from the surface being sprayed. So pretty much the three and uh, the three should be doubled to get to get the width. So a 310 would be a six inch width. The last two numbers represent the whole orifice, uh, the whole or the orifice size in a one and one thousandths of an inch. So a 310 has a uh, has a width of six inches because you double the first number, and the last two numbers, the ten, ten, would be one thousandths of an inch. That's well, what it would be of a one thousand of an inch. Okay. So here we go. I got a, I got a chart size right here. So again, if you look at the three one one right here in the top of the picture, confirm your spray can be used with the spray tip. Obviously, it'll every every spray gun as well has a different size, uh, can handle a different type of tip. So if you go ahead and go for a Graco one, it'll tell you what type of materials you can spray. Then this is your chart. Uh, what type of spray width you need for your project but if you go to other uh, actual type uh, section material the pamphlet you can see what it, it's used for so if you go to stain and sealer you can start looking at a uh, uh, 209 to 11 and this is in the four inches by the way so because it's a two it goes into a four because it's three it goes into six inches uh, as in width and pretty much you go like that, but the, the point is this is the different size. If you go to semi-transparent stains, you, you can start, and this is very thin, very, very thin, which is why it starts off at 209. And if you notice, the thicker it goes, the more you get into this. So if you go to semi-transparent, you still got a 211, and, but, you, but you don't got a 209, so you start going up in sizes. Solid stain. Same thing, 211, you start going up in sizes. Once you get to interior paints and primers, you start, you don't go to any of these anymore. You go to, uh, you go to 315. And for exteriors, likewise. Now, what we do, we like using a 310. We like using 310s. And that number isn't here, but this, but the Graco does produce this, those tips. Now, 310s are supposedly meant for more of a solid stain and semi-transparent, but we always spray it with paint. Doesn't really matter, but this is what the manufacturer recommends. Okay. So, pretty much this is another chart right here, so you guys can see. Okay, same fan with difference orifice size. The example below demonstrates the differences between tips with the same with the same uh, fan width but increases the orifice sizes. The larger the orifice, the more coating you apply using the same spray pattern and hand and hand speed as you spray. So, if you look at this, you get these are all. This is a 515, 519, and 520, 523. So this is how much spray paint you're getting, this right here. This is how much paint is being added. So these would be the last two tips, uh, the orifice size of 1,000 of an inch. So the, the more, the bigger the last two digits, the more paint is, is applied. Now this number, again, is the size of the spray pattern, the width. So a 5, it goes into 10 inches. Again, this even though this is bringing more paint because the last two digits again it's still a five, so it's still ten inches the width. If you go to three fifteen, again this is a pretty thick coating, so this is the coating right here. But because you now you use the a three, it's a six inch width. Now the, this last two digits. These last two digits are the same, but because this one has a larger width, you actually are using less paint than you would this, even though the last, uh, even though the orifice size is the same. And if you go to the last one right here, seven and, and 15, you can see that the width is bigger than this. So which means 
the width size or the, the spray size is less. Okay, so to conclude this, again, there are different types of spray rigs and machines, and each one is specialized for a different job or project. Now, we are specifically talking about spray painter, uh, paint sprayers, or spray rigs, whatever you want to call it. But there's some that are meant for drywall, uh, drywall topping, which would be the finish, the, the last coating of a, a level 5 finish your joint compound, some are meant for glues, uh, epoxies, I mean, this is a never-ending thing, you know, uh, there's a lot of tools out there, um, again, I'm not going over all of them because that's not what the state requires you to know, the stuff I just showed you is pretty much everything they're going to ask, besides, honestly, what you're going to get tested is on the tip size, what type of machine would be better for this project versus that, but they're not going to go in detail about everything I mean the state obviously knows not everybody knows everything but it is a good idea to look at all my videos and try to memorize it write it down in your notebook if you don't want to go all back on online right R write it down have something in your memory so that you can go back and think of it and memorize it all right catch you guys later